Shalom, Shalom. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we are going to share the word of the Lord about the name of first woman, the name of first mother, Hawa, in English, Eve. Therefore, what Adam had to give his wife a new name. It's a second name. Eve in English, or Hawa, according to ancient Hebrew, modern Hebrew, Hava. Why Adam had to give his wife a new name, according to Genesis 3.20. Okay, uh, this is a Bible passage. And Adam called his wife name Eve, Hawa, because she was the mother of all living, because she was supposed to be the mother of all living. That's the meaning. Adam gave his wife new name, Hawa, subsequent to the promise of the woman's seed. Uh, before he gave before his giving new name Hawa, the Adam received the new promise after the fall. The new promise of the woman's seed. You know, the woman's seed is very much important. The, the woman's seed, the yeah, meaning is messianic child, the woman's seed, Jesus Christ, is supposed to crush the Satan. Scholars assume that Hawa is derived from verb Haya, in Hebrew verb Haya, to live, to breathe, to respire. The, the Haya, the, the verb signifies, Hawa, the name signifies the uh, propagation of life, the producing life, hinting at woman's peculiar function to quicken seed. Quicken seed means be pregnant, to bear a child. So the name Hawa has relationship with being pregnant, godly seed, being pregnant with uh, Messiah. That's the deep hidden meaning. Hava and in the modern English, modern Hebrew, but according to ancient Hebrew, Hawa. In Adam's giving a name is understood as his exercising lordship over created being. God granted, God commanded Adam to give a name to each created animals in the Garden of Eden. So, the theological meaning of giving name is to exercise the rulership or lordship of all created beings. This is the human authority. Although Adam gave the initial name woman, we are talking about first name of woman, first name of Adam's wife. Initial name was woman, Isha. Isha, Hebrew name, Isha. Woman, or wife, Isha. First wife uh, in full of amazement. When the moment Adam gave his wife, Isha, he was so much amazed. In his full of amazement at her physical beauty. Pay attention, at her physical beauty. See? The picture, this is amazing the picture, amazing beauty. There's amazing beauty in the body of woman. And then Adam seemed to realize the highest role of wife. Okay, here, but secondly, firstly, Adam was amazed by uh, physical beauty of his wife. And then he gave Isha. So Adam was Ish husband. The Isha means uh, wife. That's the first name. But second name, the Hawa, 
Adam seemed to realize the higher role of wife than a mere wife, a mere physical partner. So Ish and Isha the connote the physical partner only. Has Adam regarded his first act of giving a simple name woman, Isha, as that of the thoughtlessness of the himself? Okay, Calvin theologian, Calvin the Presbyterian found the Calvin, he made this question. Has Adam regarded his first act of giving a simple name? So giving name Isha compared to Ish, there's a simple name, just woman. Isha, initial name Isha has that of thoughtlessness, thoughtlessness of himself. Uh, because uh, he just imagined the beautiful wife as his wife, uh, and then husband and wife and we are going to produce babies. The husband and wife, they are united and they become a family. But according to theologians, uh, Isha, the name Isha is somewhat thoughtless, thoughtless idea. But another theologian, Rupertus, showing his incredibility of his wife because the, by the temptation of the, his wife, uh, he fall into sin. So uh, the Ropertus, theologian Ropertus suggested it is showing his incredulity. So Adam was not able to believe in his wife anymore. So it, 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 it is the uh, something happened, okay? The modern expositors, modern theologians generally regard it as a striking testimony to Adam's faith wishing for new dimension on the role of wife. Now, uh, tonight we are going to think about the role of wife. What could be ideal role of wife? The more than the partner, more than physical partner, more than the wife of a husband. So modern expositors generally regard giving a new name, Hawa, uh, is as a striking testimony to Adam's faith. This is expression of Adam's faith, wishing for new dimension of the role of his wife. Then. Okay, what could be the ideal role of his wife? The general role of wife uh, help each other and they produce a baby. But uh, Bible shows a ideal role of wife of a first man. The new name Hawa, Hawa means life. New name Hawa seems to imply higher wish on her. Uh, Christians must have higher wish on wife. Through her life, through her life, Hawa, all humans should be continued, and especially the seed of woman must be born and crush the head of Satan. It's about spiritual warfare. It's about bearing holy seed, producing holy children through wife. Initial human name carried biological meaning only. Okay, pay attention to this. Initial human name, Ish and Isha, man and woman. Uh, uh, this initial human names, they carry just biological meaning only. Male and female, Genesis 1, 27. God made uh, men and women, but in, in Hebrew, Jakar and Nekeba. Jakar means male, and Nekeba means female. Almost similar level of the animals. This is a physical function, or the, uh, it's like a very similar to animal life. 
Kasi initial human name. Biological meaning only. But uh, we must understand theological meaning of new name. Adam called his wife Isha. Isha. In Hebrew, Isha, woman, the opposite of man. Man, in Hebrew, Ish, woman, Isha. So it's just uh, expressing the different gender. Man and woman. The word Hebrew, man and woman, the man and woman, there's a different gender. Man and woman. Describing physical function, physical role. But the new name, Eve, Hawa, means life or living. Okay, it's quite different. Uh, in Greek, Zoe, in Greek language, Zoe means godly life or divine life, which implies very deep theological meaning. So life uh, is different from ordinary life. The life connected to uh, heaven, connected to God. The godly people be alive by godly life. So that's the meaning of Hawa. Okay, now we are going to understand the deeper theological meaning of Hawa. What could be the godly meaning of life? Okay, then what could be Hawa? According to ancient Hebrew, Hawa. The modern theologian, it is right, it is called Hava, but according to ancient Hebrew, Hawa, modern Hebrew, Hava, it means uh, blah, blah, okay, so we are going to pay attention what ancient Hebrew picture letter describes, Hawa, okay, initial letter, Kat, and then Vav, there's a dot inside the Vav, the double vav, and then the last consonant is he. Okay, pay attention to the picture. Het, that's the temple, image of temple, het. So translate in this way, in the temple of God, vav. Vav is the picture of the tent pack, and then it is used two tent packs, vav and vav, tent pack. Uh, the meaning of the vav, tent peg, is correct. Tent peg to the tent pole. Uh, if it is repeated twice, it means firmly connect to, firmly connect to. Or the tent peg only may mean pitch of a tent. Whenever, whenever a man the, the putting a Tent peg, it means he's about to pitch up a tent. The tent, the making a tent is making a dwelling place. Then last language, the hair. A man, looking like a man, the raising up both hands toward the heaven. Hair. This is the appearance of God. Whenever God appears, God's appearance scares a human being. There's a human being, uh, uh, surprised. That's the meaning of hair. The it describes impact of the God's appearance. Almost everyone who experiences the encounter with God, they are surprised. Okay, so we may attempt to interpret the meaning of Hawa in this way. Number one, the concept of Hawa, the concept of life is like this. In the temple of God. Okay, the meaning of life, the meaning of Hawa, that has close relationship in the temple of God. What kind of life? In the temple of God. And then she connects herself firmly, connects herself from that's the meaning of vav, with the spirit of God. Okay? Nail with the spirit of God. So it means in the temple of God, she's supposed to connect herself firmly with the spirit of God. That's the hawa. Then number two, 
Uh, there's another probable uh, translation. Hawa is to dwell with the spirit of God in the temple. Okay? Let us repeat once again. Hawa is to dwell with the spirit of God in the temple. The meaning is so profound, okay? Today, Christians, born again Christians, must dwell with the spirit of God in the temple. In the temple means the temple center of the life or worship center of the life. Number three, this is another translation. They describe, the, these picture letters describe Adam's wish, Adam's godly wish that she, his wife, Isha, she, the Hawa, new name Hawa, should practice daily devotion in the temple. Okay, in the Old Testament days, there's a daily devotions in the temple. How many times a day? Time of sunrise and time of sunset. God commanded Israelites to offer daily devotion, to offer the daily burnt offering with the lamb in the morning and the evening. Time of sunset, sunrise and sunset. There's a worship time. So in the temple, his wife supposed to seek fellowship with the Spirit of God. Okay, no more fellowship with Satan. This new name was given after the fall. She was tempted by Satan. So uh, now Adam was wishing for his wife. Okay, in this way, she should practice daily devotion in the temple. Where well, in the temple, temple center of life. For what? Seeking for fellowship with the Spirit of God. It means dwelling with the Spirit of God. No more come near to Satan. Okay, that's the deep meaning of Hawa. Okay, so this ancient picture letter describes a concrete concept. Hawa, okay, according to Hebrew dictionary, oh, that's a life or living, that's all. But what kind of life? What kind of living? Here, temple centered living. What kind of life? Oh, practicing daily devotion in the temple, dwelling with the Spirit of God. Okay? In this way, ancient Hebrew letters shows us profound meaning. So we are amazed by the new revelation through the hidden, hidden the ancient letters. Okay, now finally I want to uh, share with these uh, pictures. Biblical matriarchs. Okay. Uh, this ancient Hebrew picture letter, Hawa, very close uh, related to prayerful woman in the Bible. You know, Hannah, she prayed in the temple yard very hard. She upward her spirit in her prayer. And then in New Testament, Anna, the Anna, the old woman. Keep staying in the temple. And then she's the one who welcomed baby Jesus in the temple of God. So, Anna, there's a Greek sound of Hana. Uh, even Old Testament Hana and New Testament also Hana, according to Hebrew. Elizabeth was a prayerful woman. And then Maria, Holy Mary, also a prayerful woman. They are described as a woman of prayer women of prayer in the temple okay uh, we must we must adore the, to be like women of prayer in the temple and they are the exemplary matriarchs many women praying at the wailing wall in jerusalem today okay now do you see the one one lady uh, very young lady 
in Israel, when they finish high school, they get they get military training and they enter into two years military service. And they should visit Temple Yard. Okay, now let me explain about the Wailing War in Jerusalem Temple. When the AD 70 uh, Roman soldiers attacked Jerusalem. Jeruz the Roman soldiers destroyed everything in Jerusalem Temple. Everything except Western Wall. Except Western Wall. And then they made special the prayer quarter in Western Wall. And they they paved the rocky ground very nice. Uh, stones and the people are praying okay the one, there's a one woman one girl student I think girl student uh, in front of the wailing one they are reading Bible or any books and then she's crying she cannot look at she cannot read books any longer okay on the right the, the woman standing in the white suit She's the Mrs. Trump recently visit there and praying. And then the lower part, many Hebrew men are praying, touching the wall. And then most of them uh, they are crying. Yahana greatly distressed and prayed in the Lord, okay? Prayed in the temple yard. Okay. When I was visiting this wailing war, Holy Spirit caused me wailing, caused me crying, continual crying in my prayer. Mm. Okay, this is a time to pray with wailing, with crying. Okay? Now all human beings today experiencing pandemic, coronavirus, many are killed. Many are killed. Is we are living miserable time, time of God's judgment. But the godly one, godly one, are safe as they offer their life to God once again. Then godly people are going to experience renewal of spirit, revival of spirit by having prayer time. So. Uh, Almost every big city is shut down. It's very hard to move around. And the policemen checking not to move around. We have to stay in the house. In the house, we can have devotion. Many years, we are neglecting having devotion. This is a time of personal devotion at home. Read your Bible until your heart is touched by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will cause you to offer wailing prayer in your room. May God bless you. May God touch your spirit as you read the Bible once again. May God bless you as you praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And shalom. Shalom.